There are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who have been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, those who will be caregivers, and those who will need a caregiver. Rosalind Carter We celebrate caregivers. We listen to and learn from caregivers. We champion the caregivers and offer wisdom and guidance in our new podcast, Care to Listen. We hope you will. In today's episode, Advocacy, read by Rev. Sally Jo Snyder. Hi, my name is Rev. Sally Jo Snyder, and I've been involved in advocacy for over 30 years, working on campaigns on local, state, and national levels. If you think you are too small to make a difference, then you've never been in bed with a mosquito. This African proverb emphasizes that each and every one of us, no matter the label or limitation they want to place upon us, we can and we should do advocacy. Advocacy is the application of pressure to influence the people and institutions that have the power to give you what you want. Advocacy anchors on asking and answering these questions. What is the issue? What needs changed? What needs improved? What needs to be celebrated? Why? What is the experience driving your action? Who is in the position of power to give you what you want? How will you go about doing the advocacy? Once the legislation is written and passed or the resources are allocated, How will you live into this reality? Advocacy is people, policy, pressure, persistence. Advocacy is a numbers game, and successful advocacy begins by establishing a base. Always build with the persons most impacted, those whom Representative Ayanna Presley says are closest to the pain. Ask who are the ones who are most burdened by the current situation. Make these persons be the ones out front and featured in your advocacy work. The persons that will be driving the campaign. Provide opportunity for them to tell their stories to the community, to elected officials, to the media. Let them lead and then build with them. Every effective advocacy campaign has a legislative champion. Begin with your own county council member or state representative or state senator. Know your congressperson and reach out to your two federal senators. Visit all these individuals. Keep in constant communication with them. Ask them about your issue and listen to their response. Perhaps the elected official is not supportive and is in disagreement. Ask them then what is their solution? If they are in agreement with your position, ask them to take the lead in drafting a policy position. Ask them to involve their legislative colleagues that would also be in support of the policy. Encourage them to draft legislation. Offer to review the legislation. Be a part of the process. Sharing your story and the experiences of the beloved one in your care will definitely provide information and awareness of your issue and concern that legislators and policymakers simply do not have. In many instances, you will become the expert who will be invited to give testimony, and you may be asked for more information on the issue. At this point, you are in. Be pleasantly persistent like a child a month before her birthday. She knows what gift she wants. She will not ask her siblings to get the gift for her because she knows they don't have any disposable income. She knows that you are the one who can get her the gift she desires. You are the mark. She will ask you over and over and over. You have the power to give her what she wants. Her efforts will be the example of persistence. Learn from her. Be constant and consistent in your communication and in your asking make phone calls, do legislative visits. When elected officials are home in their district, your priority should be to visit them. 
Involve other members of your team to also call and visit. Keep track of the number of calls and visits. Each time when you go to visit or make a phone call or have a conversation, be sure to ask the elected for their support. If they have voiced their support, then ask them to take action, to do something. Not everyone knows about your issue and concerns. Neither do they care about the new policy you want to be created and legislated. Educate them. Make them aware. Advocacy is raising awareness and capturing attention. Be able to summarize the core of your message into a slogan that fits on a button, a bumper sticker, a t-shirt. Encourage the individuals in your advocacy work to wear the button every day and everywhere. Persons will begin to notice. You will have conversations. Send a button and a t-shirt to the elected officials. A button and a t-shirt worn by the group involved in the advocacy effort raises awareness. It also unifies the group. Persons are now a part of something, something that impacts them. Tap into that sense of belonging and connection and allow it to fuel and to drive the advocacy efforts. The labor of advocacy is long, and it can be and often is exhausting. There will be frustration and there will be disappointment. Some of what is needed will take years to be accomplished. Therefore, one is always thinking about ways to grow one's base of participants. Advocacy is also one of the very best ways to connect to others in your community and to be energized and enthused around an important issue. And in doing advocacy, you become the difference that makes an effective, positive change. Make time to celebrate the moments and the little victories. Every time someone completes a legislative visit, recognize and rejoice. Every time someone writes and has published in the local paper a letter to the editor, recognize and rejoice. Every time someone shares one story at a rally or a community forum, recognize and rejoice. Margaret Mead said it best and accurately, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Thank you for joining Care to Listen. Care to Listen was written by Sally Jo Snyder. Each episode is narrated by a unique caregiver. Developed resources reported in this podcast are supported by the National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health, under Cooperative Agreement Number UG4 LM012342, with the University of Pittsburgh Health Sciences Library System. The content is solely the responsibility of the authors and does not necessarily represent the official views of the National Institute of Health.